You want to start or you want me to start? What's going on? Hi, we're the Grocery Girls. Welcome to Off Our Needles. I'm Tracy. And I'm not wearing pants. What else is new? No, look it. <laughs> we get to sit and do this episode in our bamboo flannel pajamas. I know it's summer. Don't adjust your screens. It yeah. is Christmas in July today here at Off Our Needles. We're going to be talking about some amazing inspiration. Christmas knitting. You might not know about this about me. I'm I a might. super last minuter. Oh, you're a procrastinator. Yeah, I'm a With pro a capital P. Yeah. So we're hoping we inspire you to be a little more thoughtful about what you're going to be knitting for the Christmas season. Yes. So maybe you're going to get a jump start on this so you're not panicked come November and December. I I totally agree. And yeah. I, to be, if I'm being totally honest with you, I am a November, December Christmas gift knitter. I'm knitting up till December 24th. And every December 24th, I vow next year, I'm going to start Christmas knitting in July. And I'm not even kidding. And you don't have to like cram and that's all you're going to be knitting this summer. Yeah. But plan ahead, get these projects on your needles and just slowly work at them when yeah. you're working on your other and things. And sometimes it's hard to know what to knit in the summer yeah. for the winter season. Yeah. And that's why I think today we've had some amazing things to inspire. Okay, so we both are crazy in love with Christmas. As as I'm sure most of you are, the more decorations and the more Christmassy our home is, yes. the more we love it. I right? love the baking, I love the yeah. decorating, I love the wrapping, which is why I should really get the knitting under control a little ahead of time. I know. So that we can do all of those fun I know. things. We're also going to share with you a um, beautiful fair isled hat pattern. Oh, this thing is gorgeous. Yeah. It is the perfect gift knit in a great yarn that is wonderful for gift giving, easy to care for, and it's beautiful to knit. Yeah. Right. And also, we get to chat with Eric Lutz today of Rib Magazine. So that's going to be really exciting. Rib Magazine is a new publication, and it's specifically for men who knit and people that knit for men. And there's some even home patterns. So yeah. obviously, those are, you know, you can knit those for anybody. So we're super excited to chat with him. Yeah. Let's have, talk some Christmas in July. Let's talk. Is this Flip This Stitch? This is Flip This Stitch, which is one of my favorite things that we do. This is where we take a pattern and show you how to do a little technique that maybe you haven't done very much before, or we'll just show you how we do this. Yes. And today we're using a, we're doing a Fair Isle beanie, which is called the Frozen Snowflakes beanie. It's so cute. I love it. I love these graphic prints on yeah. Fair Isle knitting. We thought it was fun to add a Fair Isle, Fair Isle knitted hat mm -hmm. because we feel like you're going to come across a ton of Christmas projects that's ha stranded work. Yes, there's. it just seems to be that beautiful kind of Nordic look that's so cozy at holiday time. I yeah. love color knitting. I don't love color knitting. And but you just haven't given it much. You haven't tried no. it a lot, yeah. right? It's not because I don't, I'm not saying I don't like it. Yes. I'm not great at it. Yes. Um, and it is something I think is it just your love for it grows as you practice it because it's like any new technique. It doesn't come immediately. But with a little bit of practice, it's not difficult. This one is a great uh, very first Fair Isle hat, I think, because it doesn't have a long stretches where you have to catch a lot of your floats, which means you're just working in one color for a few stitches at a time. And how cute is it? Okay, I can see why she calls it a beanie. It's pretty fitted. It's There's got a bit of slouch and it's got that awesome pom-pom. It looks really cute on you. Obviously the clover pom-poms, right? Yeah. The clover yeah. pom-pom. And I love the yarn that it's in as well. It's in a yarn called Sprightly, which okay. is beautiful. It feels amazing. I was surprised to learn 100% acrylic. Yeah. To me, it felt like it had wool content. I know. It's very smooth and soft, and I think it's perfect for gift knitting because lots of people don't know how to care for maybe natural wool. You want, and lots of times you're knitting for kids or people that just want to throw things in the wash and have easy care. And I love that. And the cost factor when you're knitting a lot of gifts can really add up. So this is the kind of yarn that I think is a perfect choice for those kinds of things when you're creating your holiday knitting. The idea of being able to throw this in the washer and dryer for my kids. Yes was gold. I, I completely agree. Yeah. And the upside is it feels amazing. You're not sacrificing anything by I using know. this yarn because it feels great. It's showing the stitches yeah, beautifully, you which is really, really important in Fair Isle knitting. Totally. And it's not, it's scratchy. It's, it's a really great one. Okay. And let's show you this. I love seeing the inside of a color work hat. I know. Don't you? Yeah, I do. So you can see that there's not really long floats of color here. You've just got a few stitches. Yeah. And I think this is a great 
my first Feral project. A hat is a nice quick project. You know, it doesn't take too long to knit and it only takes one ball of each color and you're off Look to the races. That. What a beautiful knitter. It is, it's yeah. gorgeous. So this was a super fun hat, right? It was. And today in Flip This Stitch, I'm gonna show you how I do my color knitting. So I'm at the start of row 24 of our pattern, which is sort of the beginning of our snowflake that we're going to have as the main motif. My row starts with three stitches of the main color, the blue in this case. This is where our second color comes into play. The way I knit my Fair Isle knitting is I have one color carrying in my left hand and one in my right. The next stitch is my contrasting color, which is the white. So I'm going to knit it with my left hand. Now I have two of my blue or my main color and I'm going to do that with my right hand. One, two. Next, I have two with my contrast color. So those are gonna be with my left hand. And this is sort of a picking motion when you use your left hand and being a, an English knitter like myself. Now I have a stretch of five of my main color. So I'm going to do all of those with the throwing motion of my right hand, just like that. So the contrast color or the white is going to be running behind my knitting there. It's important to keep your strand running behind it nice and loose, not too tight on your tension. Otherwise your hat might be too small and not fit. So let's just knit this next two stitches in our contrast color. There, not too tight. So I'm just gonna continue in this same manner all the way around my hat, repeating the snowflake pattern as I go, and then we will move on to the next row. Okay, that looks so good, and you right? make it look so easy. Well, you know what, it's really not that tough. I think one of the main tips with any kind of a stranded color work knitting is just keeping those floats yeah. looser on the back, because that can be frustrating if things turn out too tight and too, you know, they're not gonna fit. I agree. But this is a great one. I think you should, I think you should knit this. You know what? I'm going to. I think you should, because it's a small project and it is a great practice, to, and just to get your skills going. Now it's time for our holiday inspiration parade. I love a pattern parade. I know. So we've got something for everybody's holiday list today, this year, and I can't yeah. even wait to show you. These are all brand new patterns, 2017. Yeah. So you haven't seen it last holiday. No. Yeah. So that's great. What do we want to start with today? Okay, so I have a little gifty down here. Do you? You want me to bring Let's it up? Let's see it. I love gifts. Boom. Okay, that's so. what I'm talking about. A nice big bag. Okay, so what's our first parade? The first thing I want to show you guys is something that everybody can use. How cute are these little mug cozies? I know. They're colored knitting, two colors. We've got, well, we've got the beer cozy. <laughs> <laughs> I just or put it. In the good travel mug. It's a nice tall one for your travel coffee cup. Yeah. But the shorter one is perfect for your mugs. It so these is. are the holiday mug cozies by Rebecca Bercompis. How cute. Aren't they cute? Little I-cord edging and a little button. So really they're easy to fit on all kinds of shapes. But I love that. That's like an instant holiday pick-me-up. Okay, great first holiday item. I see you're uh, wearing something holiday-like. I am. Here's one for you. I love it. Okay, so this is the Santa hat by well, our one and only Sun Meyer. Isn't it amazing? It is amazing. Okay, so you don't love a hat so much. I love a hat. I don't love how a hat squishes my hair and oh. I don't look good in them, but I love hats. That's so funny. You look um, hilarious. This is so perfect. Okay, so what I love about this pattern is yeah. it's so customizable. It totally is. And I love that. So yeah, you use one pattern. Yeah. It shows you three different ways to knit the Santa hat. Yeah. You can knit for your entire family. So three different sizes and there's two versions. Okay. Yeah, so a stripe and a solid this, yeah. and then it's the whole family size of hats. Okay. But, but look how cute. Okay. You know how everybody, I mean, not my family, but everybody likes to have those like matching pajama set or the, I think this is going to add one more element. Totally. To that matchy matchy. I see the holiday photo right here. Done. <laughs> Done. How cute is that? And the yarn actually is the uh, Cloudborn Merino worsted. It feels like a dream. It really is. I love it. See, I love this that. is why I don't like a hat. 
Well, what are we having here next? No, what's on your list? Well, colorwork stockings, because these are one of my favorite things that I've ever knit for holiday, for Christmas. I did, a couple those. years ago, I did the whole family. But this pattern, you guys, this is amazing. This is also by Sun Meyer. Yeah. Um, I love these Nordic patterns that. that she's got in there. This one's all snowflakey. And what's that one? Well, that's just a really beautiful geometric. I love that. And of course, the colors wow. she's picked are huge. Can I just say this little tip? My kids were thrilled when they got their knitted stockings because yeah. these suckers stretch. They hold a Santa lot. can fit a lot of goodies in a knitted stocking. Okay, just you know, saying. You know how we mentioned before with we were going to see a lot of the stranded and or standard, right? Yeah, Fair it's Isle? really yeah. lovely for winter. Yeah. And there's so many areas in everything we're going to show you that you can just customize it to your own color scheme, yes. to your own pattern. You know, they're just, they're so easy to make it your own. They are. And these, this kind of project, too, is wonderful for little bits of yarn that you have left. So you can make I it agree. a scrappy project, or you can buy the yarn and knit a family of stockings that look amazing yep. hanging from your fireplace. And something like this will be an heirloom. Oh, yeah. These are, right? there's a lot of love in a project like this. I, I love it. Love so this item is really fun. Yarmulkes! Oh, I love it. Because it's holiday time. It's not just Christmas. I know. There's all kinds of holidays being celebrated. But how cozy to be wearing it on your head. It's going to keep your head cozy. Yeah, it's really great. Right? So these are super quick, obviously. Yep. And we've got a knitted and a crocheted version of a yarmulke. So that's amazing. Right. And this is by Lindsay Stevens. Okay. And you're right. She's got two versions on, on the Craftsy site. The how crocheted fun. one. I almost thought this was knitted, and it's not. This is the crocheted version. And she's picked the perfect colors yeah, for the yarmulke. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful blue, kind of the blue-silver combo. Okay, what's next? What do we have in our beautiful, actually, oh yes. Oh, okay, so we know everybody in the world's not a knitter. We're not sure why. Right. But we know not everyone's a knitter. Ooh, this is dense and um, beautiful. This is a crocheted stocking. Okay, it, I, it doesn't even, I don't even know why I say it doesn't look crocheted to me, but it's really beautiful. It's called the braided Christmas stocking. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? And it looks like, oh, look at that little toe. That's going to be really cute. This one's by Jennifer Plonk. Okay. And I can just see having so much fun with color. Yes. Like the, um, your ribbing, the, the cuff on it one color. Okay. The heel toe on one, uh, one color. You're just going to have so much fun it. Making feels it. really sturdy, mm -hmm. which I really love. That's one thing with crochet. It tends to be that you get that really dense fabric. Well, so it it's gonna... uses so much more yarn as you crochet. Right. Um, and you do, you're right, you get a denser fabric, but look at these braids. I hope it's yeah. picking up these dark. It does and that's why exactly. I kind of thought it was knitted. I thought it was little cables, I but know. boy, that's really beautiful. Since we're talking about crochet, I have some other beauties. Okay, this is the cutest thing ever. I do love this. Look at this wreath. So this is the Holiday Lights Wreath by Brenda K.B. Anderson, and it's adorable. So she's crocheted all these multicolored little light bulbs, and then you put your um, crocheted letters on top. So this pattern includes every single letter of the alphabet, so you can customize it yourself. Now, I've never crocheted, but this makes me think I need to get a crochet hook and get going because I want one of these hanging in my house. So crochet is so super easy. I've told you that a ton of times. You know what I love about the colors that she chose? Okay, when I see a project and I love it, yeah. I want to duplicate it exactly. And I love things like this that are Christmassy mm -hmm. with colors that you wouldn't think of. Unexpected. It's not the red and green, yes. right? Yes. So these are unexpected colors, but it's very Christmassy Well, still. and that's where your personality can come into play. You pick the colors that make you feel good, the ones that you want to see, and there you go. It's actually twofold. It's a decoration and a necklace. Totally. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, look at this one. So this is a little more traditional and classic. It's again, this is the poinsettia wreath and it's by the same designer. So this is also Brenda Cabri Anderson. Um, and look at the colors that she's used here. So I feel like this is very classic I with the poinsettia too. flowers. And I really love this spiral thing she's got going on there. I do too. And it's knit with a styrofoam ring in there. So you guys, it's gonna be beautiful on a door. Actually yeah. be beautiful anywhere. And I just love this cranberry red. It's really, that's just one of the colors that I love for Christmas. And kind of the bright apple green. What a great gift. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so. We have a really fun last item. I hope I'm going to say it. Just, just dump it. Amigurumi. Amigurumi. So that's the, whoa, that's kind of the, it's a Japanese word, I believe. And it's a technique where they make these little tiny, cute little things, right? Sometimes it's like a TV with a face and sometimes it's little animals. 
This time it's all haul Christmas holiday winter themed stuff. And it's really not just for Christmas. I mean, there's Santa, but there's also snowmen and little candies. Okay, I can't even, the candies. Okay, let's what? talk about each of these individually because I think everyone needs their moments. Okay, let's do that. And again, this is the Amagurumi. 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 <laughs> Knit Christmas ornament pattern. Okay. Okay, look at this. This, I'm guessing, is Christmas pudding Jody, with a cherry on top. So cute. How adorable is that? I love it. And again, you guys, these are just knit with traditional Christmas colors, but yeah. you could really have fun. Yeah, and I love that there's just been three colors. So it looks like one skein of three different colors have created this whole menagerie of beautiful little ornaments. So these, oh I look at these little flat, what would you call those? Kind of those cute little, they're those little candies, right? Yeah. I think these would be so cute tied on a present. Hanging on your tree for sure, but also tied on a, on a present as a little gift. I'm not kidding you when I say I would love and hopefully I'm gonna get through one of each of these for my Christmas. Yeah, and I have to say, this is it. This is the time to do it. It is July. You can make a whack of Christmas ornaments between now and December, and look how cute that little guy is. And you can just play with the yarns you have or thoughtfully plan out some holiday colors too. I actually feel like something as simple as this Mm -hmm. You could bang a couple out in an evening. These are really fun to, to tie on gifts as okay. part of a present. I agree. And if someone who you think isn't quite sweater knit worthy. There you go. But what about this? Yeah. That's thoughtful. And it's little bits of yarn, not expensive. That's handmade. Which I love. It is. Okay, you guys. And ornaments are one of my favorite gifts to knit at Christmas. Snowman. Yeah, he's super cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, look at this. <gasps> he's so cute. Santa. He is so cute. And look at the tiny pom-pom. You know how crazy pom-poms we are. But look at his little face and he's got a little pink nose. He's adorable. Okay, I'm sorry. I just think everyone needs their And that's here. a little polar bear with <gasps> his scarf on. Again, just winter themed, but awesome. Beautiful, who wouldn't love that? These are so beautifully they made. They are, and it's really using the same shape. You're making a ball shape, but you're giving it different personalities every time. What shape are you making it? Well, they're balls. Seriously. This is a mushroom. I mean, it's not so Christmassy, but it's a mushroom. It's so cute. I mean, I would just, I would just want to make it. I don't know what it is about holidays, but I love to knit ornaments. And we're, you know, basically in the air conditioning at this point. We're oh in July. We've got iced tea, but we're thinking holidays all over the place. We are. So we're hoping with this pattern parade that you've gotten inspiration yes. um, to knit something Christmassy and sooner than later. Absolutely. Celebrate all the holidays. Yeah. Knit them up, crochet them up. I'm sure you've got someone knit worthy or crochet worthy in your what? life. Come on. <laughs>so today we have an expert that we're super excited to talk to eric lutz is joining us today from toronto canada which yeah. is very exciting and you may know that name from several places i first started hearing about eric he's a podcaster sticks plus twine yes great love it podcast love it yeah. and i love his different take on the world he's a male knitter not enough guys are out there knitting which is i love seeing that and i love seeing the different things that he chooses to knit and as a result of that i think his new venture, Rib Magazine, has come to life. Yeah. And that's what we're here to talk about today, Rib Magazine. It's the magazine for men who knit and women who knit for them. Well, we thought this was an excellent tie-in for our Christmas episode. Yes. Because there's always a man in our life Absolutely. that we're going to be knitting a for. A knit-worthy guy. And you don't need to go any further than Rib Magazine to look for inspiration for that. Unbelievable. Hi, Eric. Welcome, Eric, and thank you for joining us. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Hi, Jody. Thank you so much for having me. Hi. It's so nice to finally talk to you. Okay, so you're a fairly newish knitter. I am. I know, right? Yeah. But, a, but it's amazing. A year and a half. A year and a half. Okay. Wow. So you really quickly identified that there was a void in the market. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of what I do. My day job is figuring out that sort of stuff for people. And okay. I saw... There's not enough out there for, for people like me who are guys who knit. So was your vision a magazine instantly? It started out as a place for me to maybe find more stuff and who to, how would I get that out to people 
was it going to be online? Was it going to be a magazine? How right. is that going to work? It came to me that it just it had to be a magazine. I actually look at this magazine and th it's more of a book. It is. And we wanted to make it sort of more of a library of things that you could turn back to time and time again. Something that was sturdy and reliable and durable that would fit really nicely on your bookshelf. Well, it's definitely one of those things. I think when you purchase it, it is, it is a collectible. It's a keeper. You guys pick a theme every publication, every issue. And I That's have right. in front of me, I have the first issue, which is Patina. I mean, publishing this magazine, it must be just a huge thing on your plate. It must be a passion project for you guys. It's absolutely a passion for myself and uh, our editor, Devin. Yes. And, you know, if we weren't passionate about it, I don't think we'd ever be able to make it happen. If you don't have a love for it, it's, it's a lot more work than one might think. Absolutely. You guys have incredible contributors as far as your patterns go in these magazines. How does that happen? Some of it is by luck. Um, some of it is by um, coercion. <laughs> Sometimes it's just people looking for, you know, a new outlet. Designers are looking for a new opportunity to try something new and different. And we've been really, really fortunate to be able to work with the kinds of people that, that we like to, to knit from. I would love to knit something for my husband. And it's been really difficult to find a sweater pattern that I think he's going to love. But now the difficult part is choosing the ones out of Rib Magazine because you guys have put so many gorgeous ones in there. We always said that yeah, we didn't want to just have men who knit by the magazine right. or knit from it because we know a lot of women are looking for patterns to make for their you know their husbands or their boyfriends or their their children and we thought well wouldn't it be great if there was a publication too for women who knit who could just put it in front of their husband and say pick something yes. and you'll have something just to go to the races with I absolutely agree because today we're talking about um, our Christmas in July inspiration. So we're trying to get going with our knitting well before the Christmas crunch. And I think this is actually mm -hmm. the, the perfect time to be choosing something like a special sweater and get tons of tons of time to knit it up. Absolutely. That was, you know, one of the things that we looked for was trying not to be seasonal so much, but give you a library that you can turn to at almost any time of year and find something to make. In the first issue of Rib Magazine, I fell in love with a dragon moss pillow pattern. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. I absolutely love it. And there, there will be some in my living room at some point. And it's by an up and coming designer named Eric Lutz. How did that happen? Sometimes necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. And we, we knew that we needed something beyond, um, you know, just a, apparel and accessories. So I took on the challenge of trying to start designing something. And I've always been fascinated by Guernsey sweaters. And I thought, well, what if I made a Guernsey that you could have around with you all the time? You can't wear a sweater, you know, in some climates in the middle of the summer, for, for instance. Yes. But you could always have it on your couch. It could always be something cozy in your home. I love following you on your podcast, Sticks Plus Twine, and through Instagram, because you're a world <laughs> traveler. I'm very, very fortunate that I'm able to travel as much as I do. And I, I try to see it as my life's work is to explore yeah. as much of the world as I can. Uh, there's no better inspiration for design than seeing the rest of the world. I just got back from a trip to... Well, Middle East and Italy, and oh. I'll tell you, Venice has so much inspiration there. I, I can't wait to start turning some of those into design. Okay, that was my next question. When do we get to see your next design? Well, you'll just have to watch this space. I'm working up a few things already, okay. so I'm trying to figure out if it's going to be a sweater or a wow. sock, potentially, or a scarf or cowls, but... There's a lot of stuff still in the work. Eric, I can't tell you how excited I was when I heard about what Rib Magazine was going to be all about and then seeing the issues that are coming out. I just feel like things are getting even, it's hard to imagine them getting more beautiful. They're just stunning. Uh, we, we definitely saw a need and we, we wanted to try and deliver something that was beautiful, that had high quality, that was valuable to people, that didn't just sort of fall on its face. We, I, we knew if we were going to put it out, it had to be spectacular. Well, that's a great word for it. Spectacular yeah. is a great word for <laughs> I it. I agree. I love a paper book myself. I love having the book in my hand and turning the pages, but I love that you guys also have your e-book scratch off code in yeah, there. Right here. Because there, it is the world of e-patterns and Ravelry libraries and things like that. So I love that you guys provided that. Well, thank you. And, and we, Honestly, everybody works in a different way. Some people really just want a digital version. 
Yeah. Um, and they're happy to work off their iPad. Some people want to write, write in a book and make their own notes. Right. And, you know, for myself, I like to print out and just take the pages I need and the pieces of the pattern that I actually need right. because I travel so much. I can't always fit yeah. a lot of material. I'd rather bring more yarn. <laughs> uh, frankly, yeah. Uh, so we thought it would it would be worthwhile, right? Who who wants to travel with you know books and books and books when you could bring skeins and skeins and skeins of yarn? I totally agree. <laughs> Can you tell <laughs> us what's coming up in issue three? Are we allowed to know those things? Well, issue three has a different theme again. Every theme, obviously, every issue has a different theme, and this right. one is alchemy. Alchemy. And I can't share yet what the patterns are going to look like, but I will tell you. It is going to be really, really interesting. We've got some exciting new designs coming that I, I'm absolutely blown away by that I cannot wait to start making myself. Wow. That is super, super good tease, Eric. Thank you. So we're so excited. You'll, you'll love it. Trust I have no doubt. It. So we're so excited for issue two for Rib Magazine. Um, um, it's going to be available now. It's at Rib mag.com absolutely eric thank you so much we hope that all the ladies and all the gentlemen look to your magazine and your new issue for inspiration for their christmas knitting thank you so much for having me and i will say this as a, as a parting thank you that there is absolutely for sure something in this issue for everyone from i have a week left to make a gift to I have six months to plan out something amazing. So hopefully you'll you'll agree. Eric, this has been such a treat talking to you. Thank you so much for making time for us today. Oh, it's been absolutely my pleasure. Oh. Thank you for having me. Okay, thanks. Okay, so that was it. That's our Christmas in July episode. Are you guys inspired? Because yeah. I am. And one more thing that gets me super inspired is the smell of baking cookies. Yeah. And we actually have a free download for you guys this week of our favorite family ginger cookie recipe. So if you got the knitting inspiration and you want to have some cookies to go along with it, download that free PDF because I think you will love them. Yeah, it would have been nice to show you them, but <laughs> we're just going <laughs> to... We have chocolate instead today. And <laughs> trust me, we dip into this bowl no. regularly. Okay, so I just have to say that they're not the crunchy ginger cookies. They're the soft, rolling sugar, yeah. gooey. Oh they're fabulous. Gosh. Honestly, we could go on and on because we love them so much. Yeah. And wasn't it amazing to be able to talk to Eric Lutz today and see all yes. these Christmas patterns and get you all inspired? I wonder, you know, which one do you guys want to cast on? You should let us know in the comment section below because we love to hear from you guys. And don't forget, as always, everything that we talked about today, yes. you can find links to that in the description box below. Absolutely. Yeah. So until next time, you guys, happy holiday knitting. See you next time. Bye. I'm totally having a chocolate.